back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I'm continuing today with my uh, adventure in the south of Israel. And I'm standing here in probably the most remote place of Israel I've ever been. We're just off the site here of Road 171. Uh, my wife and I are driving on Road 10 today. It's one of the special days of the year when it's open. Road 10 is an incredible road that runs along the Israel-Egypt border. Used to be open all the time, but after a couple of uh, terrorist attacks in Eilat, the army closed it off, and now only certain sections are open to civilians on very specific days, and this happens to be one of the two days at the end of August and next during the Jewish High Holidays. So where we are now um, is heading south towards the turn on to row 10. I mean, we've been driving on this road for 20 minutes. I've never been in a place in Israel before quite like this. There's no power lines. We haven't seen a house for about 30 minutes. And if I stop speaking, it's the only time in Israel I've ever heard the, the sound of absolute silence. There's no one here. There's nothing here. A few army firing ranges, but it's just complete open wilderness. Even to drive on this road, ro road 171, which is incredibly scenic, you're only allowed to be here during the daytime, you can't even use this road at nighttime. And if you want to sleep here, you have to be like a super experienced guide. And this is amazing. It just fascinates me that Israel, when you're in Tel Aviv, it, you know, central Israel, everything is so crowded and you come out to a place like this. And as far as the eye can see on either side of this road, all you can see is desert. The odd Bedouin uh, off-road vehicle is passing by every 10 minutes, but you'd go probably 20 minutes with, without seeing another human. So uh, we're gonna continue now to road 10 and I hope this proves to be interesting. Okay, so we've just been allowed on to Kvish Eser. This is a road here, and uh, the soldiers you can see behind me in the background on foot patrol, those are Egyptian soldiers just across the border, and there's actually on the other side of me, towards that part of the, of the scenery, there's a giant Egyptian army base. They all have this kind of distinctive red and yellow uh, coloring. Uh, the soldiers were really nice, but you, you really go on to a army road. They have to open a huge gate by hand, and then, you know, all the signage says for official use only. So what we're seeing here, the background all over in this direction, besides the Egyptian soldiers patrolling their side of the border, that's a border fence just about 50 meters behind me there. And we're getting beautiful views over the territory of uh, northern Sinai in Egypt here. And we're continuing on this road until Nitsana, which is the exit point for this stretch of the road that the army have opened. see Israel's border fence uh, right behind me here it's a huge it's not huge I mean but it is supposed to be seven meters tall and I'd say looking at it, it looks about that um, it was traditionally a pretty inconspicuous fence uh, but the Egyptian the Egypt Israel border as I mentioned yesterday uh, was long associated with human trafficking and drug smuggling so in order to make it harder for people to cross the border illegally Israel um, undertook what must have been a huge infrastructural project because you know whoever put this fence up was working in the scorching hot desert sun I can only imagine and it's now a big steel fence so this is road uh, 10 is in front of me so the army does actually have a separate uh, patrol road for itself although the roads are about 10 or 20 meters parallel what's also really interesting is just the huge difference in landscape between the Israeli side and the Egyptian side. What you're seeing in the background behind me is northern Sinai in Egypt. Of course, this part of the world has biblical significance for Jews because we believe it's where the ancient Israelites wandered for 40 years. But just looking at that huge precipice uh, behind me, it's a huge drop. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much um, in the way of sort of people or vehicles on the Egyptian side. Um, it's pretty... Uh, it's, it's pretty empty there, so just really incredible views. And it's a one lane road. Um, I would say if, if you're thinking about doing this road, you don't need an SUV or a uh, you know off-road vehicle, but it is pretty narrow, so when cars pass, you have to pull in. But uh, it's been so far a really, really worthwhile experience doing this.
one of the nice features of Kvish Esse Road 10 is that you have a lot of uh, observation points along the way to pull in. This is one of them we're here just a few hundred meters down the road from a IDF post. You do get checked and asked questions a few times on the road. And you can see behind me there, the <laughs> this this is Kvish Esse, it's just literally uh, cracked in some places leading down this hill. Uh, there's some interesting uh, signage on this particular post that was saying that the current path of the Israel-Egypt uh, border and you can see the border fence there and that if you can make it out in the distance uh, the kind of cream and red colored buildings are these Egyptian uh, border watch posts and they're actually located about every kilometer or so alongside the border and they're just I mean probably 20 meters on the Egyptian side of the fence there, so pretty close, right up next to it. Um, the, the course of the Israel-Egypt border was uh, finalized in 1906. As I mentioned before, it was concluded between Great Britain and uh, Turkey, basically, because this part was part of the Ottoman Empire, what's nowadays Israel, or what was then Palestine, and Egypt at the time was a British protectorate. So those were the two sides who met to... So this, this border that was concluded in 1906, even though the countries have changed, it still remained the course of the uh, border here that we're driving along on Route 10.